Stepping up the pressure, protesters in Hong Kong are vowing to boycott those who support the police and calling for massive ATM withdrawals. To send Beijing a message, let's go to Fox Business's Susan Lee live on the scene with the latest. They are creative. Massive bank withdrawals, Susan. Yeah, but you do have a cap at the ATM, so it's 20,000 Hong Kong dollars, so you can only take out 2,500 U.S. dollars each time. So far, you have 400 of these protesters taking pictures of them actually withdrawing their money. The protest side say that $9 million has been withdrawn. Not a lot of money, especially when you think about the entire economy of Hong Kong. And don't forget that protest leaders tend to exaggerate some of the numbers as well. So I wouldn't say that this is catching on here in the city of Hong Kong. But today, we did see thousands more rallying in the heart, the financial heart of the city of Hong Kong because it was in this park that's just outside those iconic, those iconic skyscrapers that dot the Hong Kong skyline. Now, this is heading into an 11th week of protests, and this weekend is going to be a big one since they are calling for a rather mass rally, a pro-democracy march on Sunday that should attract hundreds of thousands. The last time they did this type of march, we had one to two million of Hong Kong, seven million residents taking to the streets. So that's something to watch. Now, I spoke to one of the uh, student leaders today, and I asked them, you know, an international community is watching right now, and what, they want to know why you're doing this. Take a listen. We do not believe in the Communist Party because we think that the Communist Party, the nature of the Communist Party is wicked and evil. And that's why we won't negotiate and try to have a deliberation with the Communist Party. After all, we don't have faith with them. Because now, there are concerns about whether or not Beijing might militarily intervene. Well, President Trump has said that he hopes Beijing treats Hong Kong protesters humanely. And I asked one of them, what do you want the president to do? What I am here to say is to ask Donald Trump to be tough with China. Right. Being tough is the only language that a totalitarian uh, government understands. It's and then we have late, the late uh, and new, brand new VO video of the Chinese military buildup across and along the Hong Kong border with China. And we do see an amassing of troops, also tanks and armor personnel carriers as well. China, of course, says these are just exercises. And this is in preparations for the 70th anniversary of the People's Founding, the Communist Party's founding. However, a lot of people are more concerned. I wouldn't say that the chances are high, according to the experts I speak to here in Hong Kong, but uh, there is more, shall we say, heightened concern that maybe China might intervene militarily, but still a very remote chance of that, guys. Susan, thank you. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Susan stays with us, and joining us, Jake Parker, U.S.-China Business Council Senior Vice President. Jake, good to see you, and uh, you heard what Susan's reporting there. Your contacts you know, certainly are in the business community. What's the big concern there from people you're talking to as we head into what we expect to be a tense weekend? Well, look, human rights and fundamental freedoms are core values of business, uh, of our business employees as well as their consumers. I think as with any group with significant operations in the Asia-Pacific region, our member companies are watching very closely the actions that are happening in Taiwan. And the ultimate focus for them right now is that this gets resolved peacefully. They are watching closely Hong Kong, the point, and they, and they don't, and they, it, are they making any adjustments, any changes to their, to their plans right now, or is it just a watch, wait and see from what you're hearing? Currently at the moment, our companies are looking at their risk management strategies. Obviously, the shutdown of the Hong Kong airport has created some uh, difficulties for industry. Hong Kong also happens to be the regional headquarters for a number of companies that operate in the Asia-Pacific region. Right. So they're carefully evaluating their situation now. But again, they just want to make sure that this gets resolved peacefully. That move to the airport, Susan, was one, we've talked about this throughout the week, was, so it was questioned strategically whether that was beneficial to the protesters' uh, cause or it damaged it because of what Jake brings up, that the international business community has to deal with the uh, disruption. So over the weekend, they, from what you said, they won't be there, right? They'll be in other parts of the, the city? Yeah, that's right. So on Saturday evening, they'll be in Kowloon, which is just across the harbor here in Hong Kong. And then on Sunday, a big one being called. It's called, it's being dubbed 8.18, August 18th, and a mass rally expected in the financial heart of Hong Kong, which is where we are. So they'll be walking this uh, long artery from Causeway Bay all the way to Central, which is where those famous skyscrapers are. And they're expecting a lot of people to come out and support with all the promotion and uh, social media that they've been doing 
continuing to to basically call people to the streets. Last time they did this, as I mentioned to you, one to two million came out. They're still looking at maybe hundreds of thousands. Still, though, that's a, a pretty big number. But maybe the disruptions to the economy has turned general public sentiment. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how supportive the general public is to these uh, Hong Kong protesters. Yeah, that was the thing, even, Jake, with the stimulus package, I thought. I and mean, Susan actually brought this up, saying that maybe they were just trying to uh, buy off the general population in some ways, the government, by saying, hey, here's some tax rebates, here's some subsidies, and uh, you, know, you already have the disruption at the airport. Do, is the thinking from where you sit that they can continue to have public uh, support for their cause? Because that would be important if this is going to drag on for a while. So we don't deal with the public in Hong Kong as much, but I can yeah. tell you that from the business perspective, what they're interested in is just stability. They like stability. They hate uncertainty. And at the moment in Hong Kong, what they're looking for is just to keep a profile low, watch how things unfold, and hopefully keep uh, everything resolved peacefully and to move forward in a way that allows business to continue. You mentioned, Jake, Hong Kong being the center of business activity in that region and a uh, headquarters for many companies. So what's the importance for the it's a semi-autonomous region as we talked about over and over again but given what we're going through with china on the trade side what what's the the real importance for some of these companies if they can't operate as freely in in, in hong kong what do they do well, so it's really important to remember that the Hong Kong United States Policy Act of 1992 does give Hong Kong a special status from trade and also from a perspective of its citizens traveling to the United States. Uh, U.S. companies do business there because of its open market economy, because of its geographic location, and frankly, because of its proximity to China. Right. Uh, we hope that that will continue going forward because any change in that status quo will have a detrimental and deleterious impact on U.S. business and industry operating in the Asia Pacific yeah, maybe region. The Singapore, but still out. Uh, final uh, word to you, Susan, ahead of the weekend. Looks like Sunday. I know tomorrow's a big day, or Saturday. I just get our day straight here. Saturday's a big day, but Sunday's the real big one, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, Sunday is the real big one, and I would be very interested to see how many actually turn out because then mm. I think that's a great gauge as to how how much public support they have. And public support, by the way, is very important to these protesters. We're, we're stretching into an 11th week of protests. That's even more than what they saw back in 2014 with the umbrella movement when they pretty much shut down one of the main roads oh, yeah. here in Hong Kong. And they actually celebrated that tonight. They said 68 days. That's a that's a long ongoing protest here, and they need that public support to uh, to make it sure that it continues. All right, we'll watch it over the weekend. Good reporting. Susan, Jake, good to see you. Thanks for coming on.